Hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's special webinar exclusively for JFD Brokers. My name is Jens Klatt and I'm uh, presenting to you today a very, very um, spectacular topic um, in trading. Uh, it's called behavioral finance and how to use it in your trading, um, behavioral economics. So uh, I think personally one of the most exciting topics on trading um, in general, has a lot of has lots uh, um, uh, in, in common, or has a lot of uh, um, um, uh, has has a lot of to, has a lot to do with. So that's the way around. It's a lot to do with um, trading psychology in general, and um, some very interesting questions which usually occur um, when you trade. So probably from time to time, you have wondered why can not I just uh, let my my uh, winning trades run while cutting uh, losers short. Um, and uh, there's a very, very um, simple solution, or not solution, but, but reason behind this. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's an human uh, reason. Um, and um, it's uh, one of the most difficult things to do um, in, in trading in general. Let your, run, uh, let your winners run. And um, so in the uh, next 45 to 60 minutes, I want to guide you through uh, this, this concept. What's the reason behind this? And uh, yeah, probably you'll afterwards, uh, you're, you're afterwards capable of, of, of somehow getting rid of it. I'm not sure whether, whether this is such an easy task. So, um, but you can probably uh, recalibrate your mindset, let's call it. And um, if, you, if you know why you're doing what you're doing, then probably um, you, you have already um, an, an idea of, of um, how to get rid of it or let's say how to control it a little better and then probably being capable of letting uh, winning trades run while cutting losers short. So uh, let's start with, with this um, exciting question here. So uh, the exciting question is why do retail traders do what they do? Um, so why do they hold too long on losing positions and cut winners um, short? So especially since there are many educational pieces out there emphasizing letting winners run and cut losers short. So um, there is at least uh, the, at least one, let's say, but the, I think there's plenty. It's probably thousands of uh, trading books out there who always mention and quote this, uh, this very important um, uh, um, sentence here, that winners run, cut losers short one or the other way. So if you uh, read one of the um, best trading books out there, it's called Market Wizards from um, Jack Schwager. It's an interview uh, series, if you want, with um, uh, highly professional and successful traders. Um, you'll find at least, let's say, three. Um, I think it's way more um, who, who mention exactly that. But the thing is, um, even though we, we know this and even though um, a professional and highly successful trader and meaning successful in terms of, of uh, having made money trading the markets, I mean, if you're, if you're becoming um, um, a highly successful trader and become a billionaire by trading, uh, funding your hedge fund and I mean, well, if, if someone like this tells you, okay, let your winners run, cut your losers short and you'll be fine, um, somehow it must be, uh, it, it, it must be it must be obvious that this is probably the key to success then um, but the question remains why can't we be be capable of, of doing this why, why why don't we do it so uh, you might wonder right now um, how I can prove this so I'll show you several charts afterwards um, where you can exactly see that that I'm not just say well obviously uh, you don't let your winners run and cut your losers short but this is um, this is very, very common uh, in, in, in the retail trading uh, um, uh, business here. Um, and um, yeah, so what, what do we know is that psychology in trading plays a crucial role. Um, I think no one will question that. And um, obviously emotions play a very, very important part and play, have a very important task here. So it's uh, anger, frustration, it's fear. Uh, we have to underline this, by the way. So fear is probably um, the the emotion which is uh, coming into play here in trading. Self confidence, ego, motivation, actionism. If you put all this together, um, you will see that all those uh, emotions I just mentioned here um, are somehow interacting with each other. And if you want, you can put fear on top of everything, and then see that fear is the main driver 
um, while you do what you do or while you don't do what you don't uh, what, what you what you have to do um, so uh, Based on my personal experience, obviously, fear is one of the main topics, emotions in trading. And um, what, what does this mean? Why is, why is fear one of the main topics? So um, it's a very easy um, um, example I give you here, but um, you, can, you can easily find others when you, when you um, probably analyze your own trading here, why you do what you're doing. Um, so for example, um, just, just imagine you're having a 9 to 5 job, classic 9 to 5 job. So you, I don't know working as a, I don't know, what do you work 9 to 5? So, I don't know, as a cop, let's say. Are you working as a, as a cop? And um, I, I'm not sure what, uh, what a cop makes um, um, a month, but let's say, on average, somewhere between two and a half, three thousand 3,000 euros net. Um, that's after tax and everything. Um, and so you're, you're, you're making on average two and a half, three thousand 3,000 euros. And now imagine the following. Just imagine that, um, that that you that you um, have a have a grandmother. Um, unfortunately, she dies, and um, she leaves you with uh, I don't know a, a portfolio of stocks, and it's worth five hundred thousand euros. So, and now you read a trading book, and in this trading book, um, you can you can usually see. So you plan to to trade the markets. So you say, okay, I do this uh, part time here. Um, I'll I'll um, have my full time job as a cop. And um, uh, make make uh, um, 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 make my my or have have a certain living standard, and I don't need to 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 change anything. But but part time, I start to um, develop a trading strategy, or I want to get um, I'm used to to how to trade the markets and to somehow make money out of this. Probably long term, um, you you th you say, hey, well, I I, I want to try to probably one day uh, make my uh, make make ends meet out of this, and um, so. So then you have a trading book and it says, well, risk 1% per trade. So it's a rule of thumb saying one trade and risk 1% per, uh, um, per trade on average. Meaning that you're, if you have a 500,000 uh, portfolio, you're risking 1%, you're risking 5,000 euros per trade. Now imagine you're trading an approach which is like, I don't know, the open range breakout strategy I usually present here in, um, during the US market opening when I traded live and I present my thoughts on this and um, you have a time frame of five minutes here and then you say okay I have the open range um, we don't need to to go into further details here but um, we have the open range and we say well um, now let's let's go uh, let's go short the S&P for example let's let's put it that way so uh, the great thing is I, I just formulated a separate for the S&P based on this open range setup here in the German uh, version of a, of a webinar several minutes ago uh, that's a setup you can you can formulate here so you say okay I'm short 2,428 I'm putting my stop at seven uh, seven points higher above the um, current intraday trading highs, it's 2,435, and then I go for a target around 2,415. The risk reward is around one to two, great thing. So, and now um, here uh, comes the, the, the mathematical um, um, thing into play. We have seven points risk, obviously, seven P risk. Meaning that if you're risking 1% or 5,000 euros, um, you can have a, a point value of 700 euros, okay? So, um, meaning in this case, uh, you'd, I don't know, sell how much? Um, I don't know, probably 70, 70 S&P? Is this true? No, seven. I'm sorry, not 70, 700. So, you, you'd sell something like, like 700 probably. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do it that way. So probably seven hundred, probably eight hundred. I don't I don't know. Some something around this. Um, and uh, now imagine the market moves against you. So it doesn't um, trade in your direction, but it breaks out on the downside. You're getting triggered here on two uh, four twenty eight, and then the market moves against you. It doesn't uh, keep on on falling, but pushes back to let's say two thousand four hundred thirty one. So it moves three points against you. Three points against you means uh, that you're losing nearly 50% of your of your initial risk. Your initial risk uh, was 5,000 euros, so half of it is 2,500. So you're losing one month salary 
in let's say 10 minutes or something so you're behind what do you do can you afford this or do you think you you're mentally stable enough to say okay I go for it I bet you not and it's it's normal it's it's human okay so um, it's, it's for me it's the same it would be the same it, it's um for for everyone who is confronted with such a um, abstract situation here uh, such a stressful situation it's not normal to just say hey I don't care how much I make a month um, I don't. I don't care um, um, if I'm if I'm behind two and a half, three thousand. It's one month salary. No one. No one says I don't care. So you care, even if you don't show it. You in in, in um, um, when you're sitting in front of the screen, you care. You definitely care. So uh, what do you do if you say, Hey, I can't afford this? The tendency of the classic uh, retail trader is to take out the stop. So the the um, uh, the nearer you that the market traded towards the stop, the more likely it is that you take out the stop and somehow try to avoid to make um, a realized loss out of a floating loss. So the the funny thing is, and based on my personal experience, usually traders seem to to think um, a floating loss is not a loss since it's not real. So the moment you are you are in the market, you're positioned, and the market um, um, shows a floating loss, it's not a loss. So, uh, meaning if you take out the stop and get, not getting stopped out, you don't have a loss. Um, that's that's um, by you probably might might um, um, smile or laugh, but this is exactly the thinking many retail traders have. So, based on my personal experience, I have some years of experience. So, I met several traders. It's more than ten years, and I met several people. I, I I did several trading coachings, um, and um, all these people. I, I coached or I talked to had this tendency to say, well, if it's a floating loss, it's not a realized loss, it's, so it's not, not a loss. And um, that's what, what they usually do. Now, let's put it the other way around. Um, let's say the market um, triggers you short here at 428 and then it moves to 425, 424. So, uh, meaning you're ahead four points and uh, meaning in this case, that you're making two and a half to three thousand euros. What will do? What will you do? Let's let's say market does this in let's say ten minutes. You just made one month salary in ten minutes. What will you do? Will you say okay? Well, let's see whether the market moves down towards two thousand four hundred and fifteen, uh, and yeah, probably be a little greedy. And now let's look over here. Risk of of being uh, frustrated afterwards if you if you're greedy and if the market then stops you out break even uh, that's the question I can answer that question so the, the usual tendency here of uh, retail traders is to just take the winner here and just say okay I I I take those four points I take the two and a half three months so you three k so usually I have to work for this one month I have to risk my life I mean we just said that that you're a cop you have to risk your life for this. Um, and then now you're making this in 10 minutes of, of, of trading the markets. So what you usually do obviously is you obviously let your losers run in case uh, you're facing a losing trade here since as long as it's a floating loss it's not a loss and so you take out the stop and you start to hope that the market sooner rather than later will turn around. And if the market moves in your direction you tend to grab the winner just because well, you, you just made one month salary. So you now might say, okay, well, this is not realistic. Um, so I'm not making one month salary in 10 minutes of trading because my, my account is too small for this. The usual tendency uh, is the same even if you're trading a way smaller account. So you probably do not believe me here, but I will show you several charts um, in a few few minutes here, which will show you exactly that that this is natural. It's 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 just human, and that's a human tendency to to uh, cut winners short while letting losers run. And um, so the main the main topic here is it's it's fear which is driving you. So in case of the market moving against you. Um, you're fearing that you're losing um, a one month salary in 10 minutes and you, you just say I can't afford this because you're not you, you do not trust your trading approach and, and you're, you're yeah emotionally involved same thing on the other hand you fear that you have to give away um, um, such a month salary if the market moves um, in your direction so it's a very simple um, 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 example here but it's not abstract it's real and I bet um, all the participants here in this webinar um, have been in a situation where they had a position going which was far too big 
um, compared to their account size and where they started to get, uh, to get emotionally involved. And once again, it's just human. It's just human uh, based on, on what we'll uh, later um, 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 understand as so-called loss aversion. So based on that, um, what I just presented to you here, um, we get to see so-called cognitive biases. And uh, they, this, these cognitive biases, this, um, these are um, systematically and flawed tendencies when it comes to percipients, remembering, thinking, judging, which impacts your trading in a negative way. Also, now, um, another example here, what, what, what I mean, for example, with remembering. So um, how many times have you um, been sitting in front of your screen, <clears throat> seen the market move in a certain direction, and then just said, well, I knew it. I knew that the market will now, I don't know, collapse. Let's say um, um, Euro, for example, right now, after the ECB today, you might wonder, hey, do I have to, sh shall I go short, shall I go short, shall I go, uh, this is EuroCAT, by the way, this is the trade I, I just um, uh, um, um, opened here. Um, so I'm, I'm betting on a sentiment extreme, which is driving Canadian dollar higher, their market is heavily um, Canadian dollar short. And while I have to say that somehow I have the feeling that um, the euro is just hugely extended on the upside. Um, this is, by the way, an hourly chart. What I want to show you here is um, one second. Um, the euro USD, for example. So you now see a huge extension here on the upside. The market right now is still holding 112. And um, I bet several participants here in this webinar probably said, hey, I know Euro will come down. I bet Euro will come down. And um, now if I ask you, hey, are you positioned? Are you short Euro? You will say, ah, no, not really. I have to wait for a confirmation, whatever confirmation this might be. And then the market will probably Hopefully, I mean, I'm positioned right now, so um, I'm, I'm, dead, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I, I have a bias, obviously. So, but if the market now comes down and breaks below 112, and it's probably pushing towards 111 into the weekly close, which would be awesome, because I think that this would drive my trade Euro-Canadian dollar um, 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 on the downside too. Um, and I ask you tomorrow in the evening, again, how likely did you think it is right now that EURUSD will come down to 111? You will definitely say, if you look at the chart tomorrow and we're trading around 111, oh, nearly 100%. But if you are nearly 100% sure, the, the question remains, why don't you go short right now? If you really, if you really think that, that the market will come down um, and, and you're 100%, nearly 100% sure, 90% sure, whatever, um, why don't you go short then? So th since you are definitely not 100% sure that the market will come down, which means the likelihood you would give the market right now to come down is way below what you would say tomorrow if we really go down to 111. Um, so this is a cognitive bias here, um, uh, which is, uh, um, um, let's come back to this here, which is uh, um, a systematically and flawed tendency here to remember um, the likelihood of a certain event in the wrong way. So you definitely remember yourself wrong. You can, you can do this um, for several occasions last year. This happened several times. Um, how, how likely did you think um, has it been that uh, Donald Trump is the 45th president of the United States? Um, if Clinton um, has been elected, where well, was, was elected here, um, uh, you would have said, well, it was clear that Trump does not win. After Trump, Trump won the election, I bet you said, well, I knew it. I knew that Trump will be the next president. Same thing with the Brexit. Um, the great thing about, about um, um, this is, by the way, that I have to write down my thoughts on a daily basis. So I'm also doing market research here, and um, I'm presenting this to the audience. In the morning meetings, for example, I'm writing it down so people can read my thoughts. So there is no way out for me to, um, to, to, uh, to say, um, oh, well, I was so-and-so um, um, sure that this and that would happen. But in, for example, in, um, in case of the Brexit, I was, um, I was nearly 100% sure that it won't happen. It just was, it was, it was a too big deal that it will happen. After it happened, I was just shaking my head. But there was no chance for me to say afterwards, well, I, 
I know that they will vote Brexit. And this is something which is um, causing some tremendous trouble in terms of trading and your trading in general in the, in the long term since those cognitive biases result in a, in a um, um, tendency of, or in a behavior which is usually not optimal or which is, um, uh, which is, which is um, causing you to, to, uh, um, um, to, 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 to uh, decide in a way which uh, differs massively and in a negative way from the optimal so-called expected value. And this is something, the expected value plays a certain and very important role in trading since expected value, which is bigger zero, says you're making money with your trading. If your cognitive biases um, lead you to uh, um, um, influence your, your expected value in a negative way, and your expected value turns into negative, you're losing money per trade. And this is something you definitely have to avoid. And that's one of the reasons why behavioral finance, behavioral economics is just an important, such an important topic here. So um, I um, promised to show you a chart which shows that market participants do exactly what I just described, cutting the winners short, letting their losers run. This is a chart which is um, showing uh, the data from a third party broker, it's not JFD, and it, the time frame here is March 2014 um, until the end of, the, of Q1 2015. I've, um, I've, I've written a book, it's called um, Forex Trading, it's in German. I have a chart in there which is similar to this one, in fact it's the same chart but it's another time frame. And when I held presentations, webinars, and everything, I was usually saying, well, guys, the only thing which is different here in this chart today, um, if you look at the chart from, in this case, back, um, back then when I wrote the book, I used the chart from Q4 2009 till Q3, end of Q3 2010. Um, the only thing which is different here um, are the assets here on the on the uh, on the x axis this this is the only thing which differs here um, but in general you can definitely see that the average winner here it's blue is usually um, around half of the average loser and this is the the, the usual tendency here of retail traders um, yeah, for example, saying, hey, I'm trading way too big, so I'm, I'm taking the winner here since it makes, um, it has sometimes such a huge impact here on my, on my uh, living standard, for example. Just imagine your trading account, which is uh, small, but you're still, thanks to the leverage you can use, um, 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 you, can, you can still highly leverage positions here and make a lot of money. Um, so in this case, uh, I mean, you're, you're usually, um, tendency is, if you, let's say, 2,000, 3,000 euros ahead in the trade, you just take the winner since you say, hey, this has at least on a monthly basis a life-changing character. And this is something which is usually happening here and happening over and over again. On the other hand, if you're behind 3,000, well, you take out the stop since you say, well, I can't afford 3,000 to lose here in one trade since it nearly wipes out my account. Or it not necessarily wipes out your account, but it wipes out... Um, um, a huge portion of your of your account here and this is something you can easily see here so but still it's an abstract topic it's still very abstract still you might say okay well great you've seen this chart now he prepared everything before and he tells us exactly that what he has to tell us but and this is exactly the thing I want you to play a game with me um, there are two games here and they are independently from each other and the great thing about this game is I've played this with um, um, several people and I don't know on several occasions several presentations seminars webinars and I always got the same result and um, this is really great and since since uh, well, you will see what I'm, what I'm talking about. So um, you have two options. In game one, you have two options. So uh, you are right now getting 900 euros here from me. It's not life-changing or something. It's just nice to get 900 euros. It's, you just choose option A and you get 900 euros. Or you choose option B. You have a 90% chance of getting 1,000 euros, but a 10% chance of getting, getting nothing at all. So you're not getting anything. So now the question is, which option do you choose? So what I really like to to uh, you to do is um, write it down in the chat box here. So just say um, in case of of game one, say one and then A or B. 
depends on your on your um, um, choice. And in game two, you do the same. And game two is about losing in this case. So it's choose you choose between two options. As option A, you lose right here 900. So you have to give it to me. Or option B is you have a 90% chance of losing 1,000, but a 10% chance of not losing anything at all. So which option you choose in game two? And um, so this is this is in in fact the question. So it uh, would be um, much appreciated from my end if you if you just could could write it down in the chat box now so that we that we have an. Uh, um, um, a real example here, even though uh, we 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 got we can say uh, it's it's uh, st statistically uh, significant, even though it's still um, a tendency. Let's say so. I've played this several times. As already said, um, I had audiences of well 150, 200 people uh, in front of me, and they were um, they were always getting the same uh, result to me. So okay, so game one in this case, okay. Um, I, I'm not saying what, what you just what you just choose which which uh, choice you made, um, and what what choice do you do for for game two? I'm I'm just waiting. Let's say thirty seconds for your for your for your um, for your choice. Um, for all of your choices. So um, I, I already have some some uh, some answers here. That's something I have to add here. But I have already, I, I can already um, um, spot a tendency here. So many, many of the participants here uh, listening to the webinar right now choosing option A in game one, and they're choosing option B in game two. In fact, this is no big surprise. In fact, I knew this before. That, that this would happen since it's human. <laughs> That's great. Um, it's, it's just human. So uh, it, it's, uh, um, uh, it, it, uh, how do you say this? Um, so in German we say, we werten das nicht. So it has no, no value, but not in terms of value, but in terms of, uh, of um, I, I don't judge about this or something. So it's, it's, it's not sad that this um, option A um, uh, in case of game one is, is bad and, and, and uh, option B is, is um, option B is, uh, is is the right choice or something. It's just a question of of human choice, let's call it. So, um, in fact, I can tell you that in all the occasions I did this game, I got the same results here, um, which means that 90% of the people, in, in, or, sorry, so in game one, usually it was between 60, more 70% that the people chose option A while saying, okay, 30% of the cases I take option B and in game two usually the tendency is that you say okay around 10% of the people there was one really uh, really um, uh, um, crazy event that was in Switzerland that was in Zurich I was holding a presentation there and um, here I had an audience of 150 people and in fact just one out of 149 uh, 150 people chose option A. So it was 99% who chose option who chose option B here in this case. But um, usually it's 10% A and 90% B. And in fact, um, this is exactly what's perfectly shown here in this in this chart. So um, I've already somehow gave a hint here um, what this game is about. Um, I will I will definitely I will definitely um, show you show you um, a market-related example here. Since um, there was also an occasion that was in Munich, I can, can real, really well remember that, where um, the uh, one more participant came to me and said, well, it's a great game, uh, and it, it really shows um, uh, um, the, the, uh, the message. Um, it transports the message here of what you try to say really well. The only problem is that probably some people might say, hey, what has this game to do with trading? So I'll give you a market-related example a little later on, something you might have felt during your trading yourself but now let's come back to this game first so why do people choose option A in case of winning and this is something here's which is obvious you get right here 900 euro from me and you have here to uh, you have a chance of 90% winning um, 1000 while uh, a 10% chance of getting nothing at all and here in game two it's about losing so game one is about winning game two is about losing um, and if you if you look at the chart, you would exactly expect what we just got here. Um, 
you would expect the people to, to choose option A. So taking a safe winner, just grabbing the 900 euros and not playing any games here um, and say, okay, I go for 1,000, um, but I mean, there's still a chance that I'm not getting anything at all. The great thing about this is, first of all, it's not a game changer, it's not a life changer for you, 900 euros or 1,000 euros more or less in your bank account probably doesn't matter. Um, and on, on top of that, the expected value here is the same. So if you multiply 90% with 1,000, you get 900. You subtract 10% multiplied with zero, so zero, you have 900 euros. Well, you have 900 euros here yourself. So the expected value in both occasions is the same. It's just about um, a psychological thing you're doing here. It's just about m a mental game we're playing. And now, look here, I mean, you, you, you're just grabbing 900 euros, you're not gambling. You're just not gambling. You're not taking, you're not going for 1,000 euros since you have a chance of 10% that you're not getting anything at all. Same thing here in case of the, of the losing game. So you could easily say, I'm losing here 900 euros, but you go for option B. Why do you go for option B? Well, it doesn't matter if you're losing 100 more, uh, 100 euros more or less, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Since, I mean, you're already losing 900, and that's for sure. So, well, if you're losing 1,000, who cares? Well, the long run, you care. That's definitely something which is true. Just imagine you're playing this 10 times, uh, and, and you're losing all the time. So you're losing 1,000. It's not just 100 euros anymore, but 1,000 you're losing. Um, but here in this game, you're not cutting the, win uh, the, the, the loser short. So you just say, also here, the expected value, the outcome is the same. But it's from a mental perspective, it's exactly what you just... Um, have seen here in this chart. So you're not cutting the loser short, but you start to hope that somehow here those 10% will hit. And then you'll say, oh, great, I haven't lost anything at all. And if you lose, well, who cares? I mean, just 100 euro more or less doesn't care. Um, and, and this is exactly the thing. So this game perfectly illustrates uh, that this chart here is no coincidence. It's, it's just, a, it, it's, it's a perfect example that this chart is no coincidence if you really got what this game is about. But no, the thing is, it's somehow abstract. So you somehow get the mental um, um, game of it, but nevertheless, uh, or the, the mental idea behind this, but nevertheless, you're probably having some trouble to adapt this to the market. And uh, that's why I prepared this following chart. It's a German chart, but I can easily, or, I mean, at the end, I think it's self-explaining. Um, it's a trading-related example. So what we do here is we just trade a breakout to new highs in this case. So higher highs, higher lows, it's an uptrend. You break, it, then the market is, is breaking out here, and so you're trading the long direction. You're trading this up, upward trend. So uh, in this case here, this, this uh, purple cycle is, um, is the entry of the long position. So here you have your initial stop and then you see the market moving your direction and you're somehow, yeah, you, you're somehow happy to see a trade um, um, uh, a winner um, 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 playing out or a good trading idea playing out. Nevertheless, you, you don't really cheer up and say, wow, great, I just made um, a great trading decision, but you're just, you're, you're nearly neutral. Um, it has also something to do with, well, what about if I just lose what I just earned here? Um, do, do I, am, I, am I really happy or is it more fear to lose what I just made here, the market moving in my direction? This is what's happening here in this red, um, in this red uh, um, um, uh, um, line. So the market is coming back. It, it's, it just does what it has to do when we see a trending structure. The market has to come back to build another relative low and then go up from there again. So, and now you see, okay, that doesn't feel good. You just made, I don't know, let's say it's, it's 1,000 euros, the market moves 1,000 euros against you, and now it's, it, it's, it's coming back. It's coming back by 50%. So you're not only ahead 500 euros. The market keeps on falling, keeps on falling, and somewhere here, you throw in the towel and you say, hey, come on, I, I just can't stand the pain anymore of losing all the money I made here. Um, so I just pull the trigger, I take out the trade, I take at least, let's say, 200 euros here. And then the market moves long from here. 
sometimes the market moves uh, the market moves lower and stops you out and you say hey great a decision here but all in all this is usually what you have seen what you have felt in your trading right so you have you have seen occasions when the market moved in your direction and when the market came down you just felt horrible you felt sick to your stomach you just you just couldn't stand the pain anymore and then you just threw in the towel uh, one one moment here shortly before the market then started to really shoot through the roof here so um, why is that? Well, there is um, there's a great book out there. I, I just present to you um, a book which I highly recommend to read if you're a trader or you plan to to become to take to take trading um, to take trading your trading to the next level. Okay, no, thank you. It's the book Thinking Fast and Slow from Kahneman. So it has nothing to do with trading, and in fact, it has everything to do with trading. So all the thoughts I just present to you here are based on this book, if you want. So you can find nearly everything in this book. I'm not saying that I'm that I'm quoting this book here, but um, what I do is I adapt all those thoughts from this book here to, to the presentation and, and to what's happening here. So loss aversion, for example, cognitive biases and everything. Um, so it influences your, your whole thinking, and, and, and that way it influences your trading uh, massively, by the way. So, and um, there is um, something you'll, you'll find in this book, Thinking Fast and Slow from Kahneman. Um, you'll find something which you can already see here. If you carefully watch and you put in an average here, what you'll see is that on average, the uh, average winner is nearly half of the amount of the average loser. So there is a um, ratio of nearly one to two. So, and this is something which Kahneman and Tversky both worked out here. Um, and by the way, the, the, the guys are, or in case of Kahneman, um, um, he is a, he's a, a Nobel Prize winner. So it's obvious that, that there must be some uh, truth behind what he just said. Um, and... Uh, so the thing is that what they just found out during their 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 studies and during um, what they worked through here was that you usually tend to uh, think um, uh, that you need to make twice as much to feel the same amount of joy um, as if you're losing. So let's say you're losing one euro. So to to compensate the uh, the pain you you have when you lose one euro is you have to make two euros. That's on average what they've just found out. So, meaning on the other hand, let's come back to this example. You're ahead 1,000 euros, so it is okay to lose 500 euros, and you're still ahead 500 euros. So you made 1,000. The market retraces 50%, so you had 500 euros, and you feel as if you're trading break even. So if the market comes down another 200, 300 euros, and you're taking out the trade here with a small winner, a small win of 200 euros, you feel as if you just have lost. Um, you just it, it just feels as if you if as if you lost here in this case 1,500 euros around. Um, this is this is ridiculous, but it's it's the truth. You might have faced this in your trading, um, and and you might have wondered why is that. So, like like um like what can I show you as a as a perfect example? Imagine the following here. So in this case, the trade is uh, now coming unfortunately against me but um, now let's let's imagine the following just imagine the market moves in my direction the market moves here down to this level um, of the lows yesterday so in the upcoming hours for whatever reason and hopefully it will um, but just imagine that this will happen here if this happens I'll put my stop to break even so currently um, to put this in perspective here on this trade I'm risking uh, 2,000 euros 2,100 euros so it's some um, slightly uh, below 0.7 percent on the whole account I'm, I'm trading here so um, now imagine the market moves 2,000 euros against me and no not against me I'm sorry in in, in, in favor of, of, of my uh, trade here in favor of me Market moves 2,000 euros um, um, in my favor. So I'm ahead 2,000 euros. What I usually do then is I have a rule I live by in my trading and works perfectly well. So I know this since I have a trading journal. I'm writing down all my trades in. Um, I know that if I uh, put the stop here to break even, well, I don't have any risk anymore in this trade. Now imagine the following. The market moves here in this direction, probably it's just breaking below the lows and then reversing aggressively higher for whatever reason, it just does. Um, so this is definitely not nice, and in fact, if I'm getting stopped out here, 
it feels like as if I just lost 2,000 euros since I was already ahead 2,000 and if the market then moves against me and stops me up break even, I'm losing all what I've just made and mentally I'm losing another two grand on top of that. So this is something which is making trading such a horrible and unrewarding and unjoyful experience. So trading is by far one of the worst experience a human being can make. So everyone thinks, well, trading is great. If you're a trader, everything's awesome. Well, it's not. It's by far, it's definitely not. And I'm saying this while I'm a trader myself. So while I'm trading the markets, I'm managing clients' money, I'm coaching people, I try to, to give them some, uh, some, some, uh, something they can build wealth on if you want. So I, I, I live and, and die for the markets if you want. Um, and at the end I say it's, uh, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's just not worth it, really. It, it, it feels horrible if you do it. And uh, you have to be some kind of, I don't know, you have to be some kind of being perverted or something if you, if you enjoy trading the markets. Because from a human perspective, it's just not nice. That's just the way it is. Um, and I can say this since I'm, I'm trading myself. But if you know this, if you, if you know this, you can start to do something against it. So um, if I'm getting stopped up break even after the market moved already in my favor and it's happening plenty of times so um, 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 I, I unfortunately I can't tell you a real number or not a number yet um, um, since I, I have to, to to look it up in my trading journal but I can tell you that um, that I have plenty of break-even trades plenty of break-even trades and we are already talking about two three thousand euros around uh, um, which is which is the initial risk and if you're getting stopped up break-even there's one point where you just know it doesn't matter. It's the brain which plays you some, which is playing some games here with you. Um, you just have to ignore it. You just have to 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 ignore it. Look at the at the numbers and just find out and say, well, great. Um, I broke even on this trade. I I made my initial risk. That was a good trading decision. At the end, okay, the market didn't move further in my direction, but still, I'm 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 doing fine, and I know that in the long term I will make money. But this is something you have to find out, and you have to uh, um, come over um, in the long term. Since if you don't, you'll have a lot of trouble. Um, since it will make you mentally sick. It's just the way it is. If 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 you if you feel for trades which where where you're not losing, um, where you're breaking even. You, you just it feels like as if you just lost this is something you definitely have to find a strategy um, um, against and, and where, where you have to try to fight against this 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 feeling which is completely human so this is just um, to to make sure that you that you have a trading related example here to understand this game which we just played here um, so this game if you want is exactly the same thing and is showing you in a easy in an easy way why it hurts if the market moved in your direction and then coming down here why it hurts more um, than you feel yeah, kind of joy if the market moves in your direction so here are four cases those four cases are out of this book I just presented thinking fast thinking slow um, and um, so the thing is that there are four cases two for the case of winning two for the case um, yeah, for the case of losing, and um, you will find those occasions in your trading. What you have to make sure is that you somehow avoid this one here. If you avoid this one, the case of losing, losing, and the small probability, a risky bet. If you can avoid this one, um, at the end, you will already do fine. Okay, so the case of winning here, a high probability, the sure bet thing. You have a 95% chance of winning 10 grand, um, and Let's say you go for another break. If you if you go for another break, well, um, then you you just could earn another ten thousand. So this is like um, the gambling. What what I just introduced to you here in in this moment when I said, well, you're gambling for another one hundred euros. So just double this amount, and you have uh, you have exactly this this case of winning here. So it's like you're you're trying to anticipate breaks to go for the home run if you want in your trading. Um, so these are the occasions where, uh, let's say, the, the the big winners come from. And if you if you're capable of 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 
um, 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 realizing such a winner, well, you're already well ahead of the of the rest. Especially if you if you can uh, scale out those um, um, in case of losings here for risky bets. If you can scale out those, well, those thing um, those those bets here alone will definitely bring your trading forward. So the same thing here, you can do this uh, the other way around. You have a five percent chance of losing, so you fear the loss. Uh, even though it's unlikely, and this will result in fast profit taking. This is something which is at the end probably it's not as worse uh, or as bad as this one, but it's still it's still bad. It's still bad if you take a good and um, a trading position, um, a winner, a, a good um, a winning position. You take the, the the potential winner too fast, since uh, this will let you yeah. This this will this will this will leave you vulnerable in those cases where you start to lose. Um, if you lose and and you you can't afford those losses since you are uh, already or are always taking your winners too fast, um, you you have somehow to yeah to pay for this if you want. Um, and and this is something which is which is uh, getting a problem here in case of losing. If you're having a high probability uh, um, trading setup, well just go for it and 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 try to to get as much out of it as possible and probably try all also here to, to trade this then to to um, get comfortable with this try to um, what what shall I say so try to uh, try to start with a small position size so I just said well try to get as much out of it as possible it doesn't necessarily mean in terms of of, of, uh, of money but in terms of um, um, mental stability here. So find out how great it is to let a winner run. Um, and if you do so, well, at the end you have uh, you will, you will well come out ahead since there will be chances, there will be market conditions when everything fits and when you can build up a position which is getting bigger and bigger, you're building a pyramid or something, and then you you get the reward for for all those painful events in the past when you just thought, oh, what, what the hell am I doing here? So, and the other thing here is this game. Um, this is something I, I, I usually refer to. It's the a boys will be boys game. And it's, it's fine since I, I know it really well for myself. I, I, I love to gamble sometimes. Um, not in terms of trading, but in, in just in terms of, of uh, going out and having some fun in the casino or something, playing some roulette, whatever. So you have a 5% chance of winning 10 grand, let's say. Um, it's, it's a small chance of winning, at similar to, to playing a lot or something, uh, but you go for it since the payoff is so great that you just say, hey, let's go for it. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Just, just, uh, just say, um, I, I'll take 100 euros, and if I can make 10 grand out of this, this would be great. And um, I think this is okay since the highly asymmetrical risk reward here is uh, justifying such an such a trade. That's by the way also something which could be easily easily uh, adapted here to uh, the current setup in the in the uh, Eurocat. So some might wonder um, why when why why do do I when uh, why why do I go short here? It's uh, it's the potential payoff I have. So the market is is definitely topping out. It's showing some weakness. The market is not really pushing higher. Not just in terms of EURUSD, but also EURUCAT. We have the sentiment extreme. We have a potential bullish. Div uh, I'm sorry, bearish divergence developing here. And I bet that there is some big potential on the downside here, pushing us at least 100 pips lower, 150 pips lower probably, to uh, to to bring me in a very uh, great position here to put my stop to break even. And then yeah, let's see um, how how things develop here. And um, that's something when I say, well, I think the risk reward here is attractive enough to justify such a trade and this is something um, if you if you can go for those asymmetrical um, um, uh, risk rewards here uh, or asymmetrical um, 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 payoffs here having a small loss a potential small loss but having a big chance on the upside well at the end if you have those two in combination and you can get rid of those here you definitely come out you definitely come out positive in your trading, profitable in your trading. So um, now let's come. It's, let's come to to uh, to to, um, to to a little summer here of all these thoughts. So the thing is, I mean, I, I talked a lot now um, over the last 50 minutes here, but um, you might wonder how can I profit in my trading from from this knowledge? What what can I do to to profit here? And um, I think the the main thing you have to get out of this is that your brain 
usually starts to to uh, or usually play ga plays games with you. Um, and uh, this is something you have to 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 remember when you when you trade the markets. So it's definitely something um, which you which you should have in mind when trading the markets. Um, and so let's say you have a winning streak now, um, and if you if you have such a winning streak, um, you gain self confidence. That's usual. Uh, and you you really feel invulnerable here. So the thing is, what I would suggest here is that you induce rational thinking, um, and you find actively reasons why the next trade could fail. So uh, be down to earth if you want. So it's it's a so-called pre-mortem analysis, and this pre-mortem analysis is something which will um, avoid that you will trade without a stop, for example. So you have definitely a point where you say, well, here, I, I am wrong here. So I, it's not short. That's like like if you if you take this here into the, the current trade in the EuroCAD, well, I have my stop here at those highs. If the market is now making higher highs from here, well, I'm definitely out. No question about it. I, I mean, I just take out the trade. Um, and then this is this thing here, which you always should remember in your trading all the time, even though you're having a winning streak, well, the next trade could fail and make sure that you never forget this. Um, so if you do this accurately, you will never trade without a stop anymore, obviously, and you won't fear losers anymore since you always know um, how big a potential loser could become. If you know where you have your stop and say, okay, here I'm out no matter what, well, you definitely know, okay, this is the point where I'm at. And then this is the amount I'm 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 losing here, and so you're you're gaining confidence in your trading in yourself, and you're not fearing uh, losses anymore, and you're not getting emotionally involved anymore. So probably you might feel sick sometimes and say, well, mm, I just lost one grand or something. However, um, I mean, how big your account might be here, but um, all in all, you can easily you can easily manipulate this feeling by for example, reducing your position size. So if you don't feel um, I'm, I'm great about losing one grand, well, there's no one out there um, holding you back from, let's say, reducing the position size to 50% uh, of the initial planned position size. So risking just 500 euros. There's no one out there. It's only you. And if you if you can 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 deal with this, and, and you're not playing matchman here with the market, or if you if you let your ego overcome you here and say, oh well, but then I'm just trading a too small position. Well, you're definitely um, you're definitely coming out ahead, and um, if you gain confidence out of this, uh, your trading will dramatically profit from this. So, the second thing is, if you grasp the concept of expected value, you definitely understand that trading based on cognitive biases will result in bad results in the long term, and this will increasing your chances of going broke. So, um, the concept of of expected value says. Uh, that you multiply the average uh, winner here with the hit rate and then you subtract the uh, um, a product of the uh, loss rate multiplied with the average loser. If you're having a positive ex um, um, if you have a positive result here at the end, well, you have a positive expected value. The moment this turns and you're breaking even here after commissions, before commissions would be horrible since uh, this means you have to subtract commissions here on top of that and then you will definitely lose money on average. Um, or it turns negative, then you have a big problem since then it's just a matter of time when you will go broke with your trading. So if you grasp this concept and if you really understand what expected value is about, then you will definitely know that if you, um, trade, if you trade based on cognitive biases, will definitely result in an overall negative uh, result for your expected value. If your expected value is big enough that you can afford those cognitive biases, you will definitely not trade or get a positive result as you would get if you ignore those cognitive biases, but you're still coming out um, positive here. But you have to make sure that you understand that you need the room to make mistakes in your trading. And this means that um, if you're if you're if you're working actively to get rid of those cognitive biases in your trading, you increase the chances massively to come out ahead in your trading and have positive expected value. So what you should do is as a solution, as an example here, formulate a trading plan and have a clear idea of what you plan to trade. Test it 
and then if it works and this is a robust approach a uh, robust exp approach then um, it has a positive expected value and the risk of ruin of nearly zero well just go for it and and stick to your plan um, this is something which takes a lot of time and this is something which which will uh, cost you hours here but in the long run this is exactly um, the business idea you have to formulate which you then try to capitalize on and um, on top of that there's something stop writing your strategy uh, or stop fighting writing your strategy down in your trades this is a usual tendency um, people do this since they want to avoid to get a result here which shows that they are doing something wrong it's kind of, of self-defense mode if you want and um, instead of this make it something positive so making mistakes for example in trading also it's, it's not just in, in trading but also in life um, and, and just knowing uh, those mistakes you made that gives you a chance to, to change something, to make something better and to, to get a positive result. So um, in the long run, you will definitely come out ahead of this. Um, if you know your mistakes and you try to cope with them and you try to get rid of those, um, um, uh, yeah, let's call them flaw tendencies or whatever. And this is something um, which, you, which you should keep in mind. I mean, all this sounds ridiculously easy. I can tell you it's not, <laughs> okay? That's the next thing. It's not just that the trading itself is, is, uh, is a horrible experience for a human being. I Somehow, I don't know why, why I say this, but it's just, it's just a fact, and I don't want to, uh, to give you any, any, uh, any, I don't know, any, any idea here uh, how great trading is if I, if I somehow know that it's not, especially not for beginners who just do not know what they're doing. But on top of that, you have to work. You put in plenty of hours of work and optimize your strategy and how you plan to tackle the market and everything. And um, it's just a really, really, really tough business. It's, it's really hard business and um, you have to understand this. You really have to, to, to understand it's hard but at the end of the road and if you're capable of, of, of uh, make money trading the markets, well the feeling you have um, after this, this is something you can't buy with any money. Uh, you, you just can't. It's, it's just a great experience. And um, so with this I just want to, to close this webinar. Um, I just you hope uh, I, I just hope that you enjoyed um, what I just presented to you. If you have any questions, um, just shoot me a mail. The mail address is in the uh, footer here, as you can see. And um, yeah, so talk to you again then uh, next week. And uh, or if you want already tomorrow uh, with the morning meeting at 9:30 a.m. GMT. It's the YouTube channel from from JFD Brokers. Uh, it's uh, an overview of the markets, and I am also giving you um, an overview of how my trade trade is doing here in the Euro-Canadian dollar short. I just hope that it will work out uh, a little better than it's right now doing. So right now it's still very choppy, but I have, and this is something I have to say here, I have just have the feeling that the market is now uh, topping out here and the Euro uh, will come down and probably also the Canadian dollar will grasp some momentum here um, rather sooner than later. And since I just do not know when this will happen, I just went for the short and mainly due to the very attractive risk reward here. Let's just hope that it will uh, develop over the next 24 hours. So have a nice evening um, and talk to you again then next week or already tomorrow. I definitely look forward to it. Have a, have a nice evening. Happy trading. Watch your stops and uh, talk to you then. See you and bye-bye.